not what I thought it would be. We made some fearless plans, took bricks in our hands. Now we're looking at the debris. But there's no sound and no parachute, no crystal ball. So many browns. It's uh, the hardest thing is going to be getting enough differentiation in the browns to make it interesting. I'll make sure all of this is quite dark on the inside, so I'm going to. Side of his coat of black and brown. Said Russin. Say something. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? That's not bad at all. Good, 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 Perfect. good. Perfect. Lovely. Um, I am. Uh, I'm actually live at the moment. I'm just starting to throw a little bit of paint down on um, Mr. Caleb, Mr. Ragnarok. Nice, Mr. Wizard. Yeah. So, uh, what's your weekend been looking like? Uh, oh, I've been all over the place, mate. Yeah. I've been all ups and downs and lefts and right. I'm currently playing with fonts, making cool logos. Ah, cool. All right. Well. Hopefully, if this thing is going out, then we're actually getting a little bit of um, a little bit of the technical side of things has been dealt with. Dealt with. Happy days. Uh, is this my Twitch? Should be, yeah. Um, if, I, if I load up my Twitch, is this going to horribly mess with things? Uh, what you can do is um, just mute your Twitch, and it should be fine. Okay. Um, the other option is I could try and share my screen, but uh, I slightly worry uh, about okay. bandwidth for I'm... that. I found it. Cool. So I'm just putting down some uh, some colours. There's an awful lot of brown. Yep, he's very brown. Radagast. Radagast the brown. Well. Well, we don't guess the brown. <laughs> we don't guess the brown. Yeah. So uh, you've been having fun with um, any more sculpts or? Uh, started in on uh, a couple of interesting things. I will be pushing out tomorrow. I think uh, by the end of the day, we'll have a, a couple of uh, exciting things to flash across the eyes of uh, the Twitter sphere. Cool, excellent. Uh, so all is good. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, can people hear me? Uh, they should be able to. Yeah. Right. Okay. If That's cool. All things being equal. 
Yeah, I'm browsing fonts. That's very exciting. <laughs> well, it depends on the fonts, I suppose. Ah, uh, these are sexy time fonts. Alright, uh, I think I'm going to go slightly... Do you know, how do you get on painting um, different types of browns? I've got really lazy in my old age and I kind of tend to just, you know, like sometimes you get models um, that have like, you know, a brown bag and they have a, like and then a leather belt and then they have this yeah, thing yeah, and that yeah. thing. I've got really like lazy. I just paint them the whole color, the whole, every part of the model is the same color. <laughs> so although I tend to work back from uh, the same, I use the same deep brown for everything, which is kind of like, um, uh, like a really, really deep brown, like GW would call it like their, their Rhinox Hide kind of shade. Yeah. Um, I try and go with like three types of brown that I'll use for each level. So like a, a warm and a, a warmer cool and a mid at my base, my one level highlight, my two level highlight. And yeah. then I find by mixing a few of those around, you've actually got a lot of variations. But I think by having cooler and cooler and warmer browns as well as darker and lighter browns you can actually get some more definition on there yeah that makes sense i tend to use as well similar kind of theory i suppose but it's more it's more in the ink glazes for me ah uh, well you see you're you're the glaze man i i i i only tend to use i use a lot of glazing when i'm doing skin and faces but i don't use it in a lot of other places i don't know why i'm just a bit lazy i think either, oh this is cool man. either that or wise Download font. Let's have that one. This is a font of just paint splashes. Not even any letters, just paint splashes. I'm sure I can do something cool with that. Yeah, because uh, I've kind of cobbled together a, um, a bit of an overlay just so it doesn't look... That looks, looks all right, man. Looks yeah, all right. looks all right. Yeah, I like it. Why has um, old Buddha's joined us? Right, so we're just uh, base coat at the moment. It's kind of dull, but necessary. Oh, I can't join your chat. I've got to follow you. Let's do that. <laughs> there we go. Boom. He's got some lovely detail on this model, Russ. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you like him. I have to say, I mean. You know, it, the uh, uh, the work that Ariana's done in the art made these sculpts an absolute joy to do because there was no. Uh, it's just the right balance of being really clear, really kind of uh, crisp work. You know, where lots of characters leaping off the page, but because they're only drawn from the front, there's still plenty of room in there to get in and interpret but it was a very very nice process to yeah. to work through i really enjoyed it nice when it works out like that it yeah. certainly is bam, bam, paint font it's All actually going to be nice um painting with you there because there's sometimes when i paint like gilball models and i'm like what the heck was that bit and i have to get the um go to the drop box and get the render out and then kind of spin it around a few times like, oh yeah it was that okay i get it yeah, yeah, there's um there's a few moments like that on some of the models. I remember that um the blacksmith model half has got a backpack and it's mostly hidden by all the stuff she's carrying. Yeah. And uh you do get a bit of um people going, What's this? It's the top of a backpack. Why can't I see the rest of the backpack? Because it's covered in weapons. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the minis aren't actually available. Russ, Russ and I have been kind of messing about. Russ, well, Russ has done the heavy lifting, to be fair. Um, mm -hmm. I get to do the cool stuff, which is paint them. But uh, Russ, Russ is a huge fan of the show. Painted, um, sculpted a bunch of the minis uh, just for um, just for giggles. And because uh, we have access to a 3D printer, such as our uh, fortune in life, um, I've now got some... Um, some fantastic minis based on Ariana's official artwork. I'm painting up. You never know, we might just uh, send them over to the Critical Role guys and they can either use them or stick them up for an auction or something for uh, for their charity that they like to support. 
It's just for a bit oh, of Oh, that's the, really. the, the 829 charity. The, that's really nice. Yeah. Uh, really nice thing they got going on there. Um, I still can't join the chat. Who knows why? Really? Yeah. It just keeps telling me that I need to follow, which I have done. Try, um, just try rebooting your, your client. Yeah, okay. I'll just refresh. Well, you, you've definitely followed as far as I can tell. Right. Ah, uh, I have followed the channel. I'm going to close Twitch and reopen it. Yeah. Please ignore the man behind the curtain. Do you know I've got a new guilty um, YouTube um, addiction? Oh, yeah. I watch. Yeah, you just you reminded me. I, sp I watch. Um, Helen Tennis Fool Us videos now. Ah, oh, I love that show. It's I know. Cr it's classic. It's brilliant. Like it's really, really good. Right. I want this font. Give me that font. Yeah. You know the downside of painting um, 3D masters? Uh, they're really fragile. Well, apart from the fact that they're really fragile, it's also, it spoils you from, from all the other minis. Yeah, it's like the ultimate detail level. No, I am not getting to join. I am not joining the chat. Alright. Uh, I have my technical guru on hand uh, at some point in time, so... Oh, wait! What's this post? Okay, I... Is no, it... that's counting up, not down. I, I, I've got a post at button. I thought maybe uh, maybe it was counting down to when I was allowed to post, but it's actually counting up because that's how numbers work. Uh, but it doesn't help me very much. Everyone else is allowed to join but me. <laughs> that's all right. We'll work, we'll work that technicality out. It's uh, not too bad. Right, so I'm doing what I normally do, which is just block out a load of colour. Just trying to get the his cloak in the art is a little bit more brown, but I just think if I get um if I go dark, he's just going to end up being a bit of an amorphous mess, isn't he? Yeah, I think in the um, I think looking at the artwork, I think you can afford to pull a warmer brown, like keep that centre like. Um, sort of tabard bib and trousers, a cool brown, and then a warmer brown for the outer coat is going to give you some definition. Then you've got a very cool greyish brown for the uh, sort of scarf thing yeah. that he's wearing. It's going to give you some separation. Yeah. And I'm just going to let that dry off, and then I'm going to do a bit. Look, look at this bit here. This this bit here was a little platform I left for uh, for for the front, for, for frontkin. For, for the cat, yeah. And I'm like, I'm searching through my box of bits from uh, H, and it's like, there's no cat in here. The cat is on the way. I have, I, I have, have, I've sent him the cat. Yeah. The cat, you'll get, you'll get a cat. Excellent. I think uh, Liam would hunt us down if we uh, didn't provide him <laughs> with a cat on there to view. Right. Uh, so I've blocked that out. Let's get a little bit of black in there, cause I... now nah, I'm gonna wait. Let me um. Start thinking about getting a bit of uh, an ink wash going because that's going to be the longest time. So are you hair drying this, or are you just letting it dry naturally? What's no, your I What's just, your view on that? I, I like hair dryers, although uh, my daughter has stolen my hair dryer because uh, hers blew <laughs> up. So I am uh, sans hair dryer at the moment. That's classic. Yeah, it's something. Um, so I'm just going to kind of. I, I tend to like. It's funny because I am the world's worst example. I lick my paintbrushes. I juice. I um, I paint like wet and messy when there's like ink that should be drying and all sorts. I correct. I get into a bit of a mess. It has to be said. I want to know what what's juicing. I'm. That's not one that I've come across. Uh, as juicing, a term. juicing is where you um, spit load the brush and then you basically um, feather the the edge. It's like feathering. Um, but you then um, suck all the juice out of the end of the paintbrush, so it's now oh, yeah, kind of dry, yeah. and it helps you absorb a bit of extra fluid. I do that. Yeah. I do that. I reckon my kidneys are like, you know, 60% Agrax Earthshade these days. 
Nice. Alright, let's get a bit of... Uh... Agrax Earthshade just is one of the best things ever. Oh, it's magic. I was watching um, uh, the Geek and Sundry Painters Guild, mm -hmm. and uh, they referred to it on there as Wizard Juice. Kind of is. Uh, was it? Or was he called it Talent Talent in a Pot? It's uh, <laughs> I like that. It's no Devil and Mud. It's no Devil and Mud. It's no Armor Wash, but what is? Oh. Those were the days. That's, that's showing my age, man. No in armor wash. That's, uh. Yeah, blast from the past, that is. That used to be my, uh, my kind of, uh, secret. Before, way before, like, Devil and Mud ever came out, I had my own kind of mix that behaved almost exactly the same. It was a derivative okay. of the armor wash. Fun paint nerd fact for you armor wash, as we know it. Is actually officially a colour called Payne's Grey. Um, it's a it's actual colour from the water, from the Windsor Newton watercolour range. That kind of warm blue grey colour. Really? Yeah. Um, I don't know why I know that. It's just one of those one of those things I picked up somewhere. Ah, oh, I'm trying to resize my canvas in Photoshop, pressing all the wrong buttons. Let's do that again. I've still got that really yeah. annoying bug with my Wacom tablet that every so often it will just rotate my canvas about 30 degrees and I cannot work out how to rotate it back. It's really, really deeply annoying. You press R for rotate and you hold down shift which tells it that you want to snap it back to its original orientation. Oh, okay. Right. Literally that easy. But I have one really, really bizarre one at the moment where often when I'm sculpting, um, if I'm doing something that needs to be a completely consistent depth, like I'm, I don't know, what's a good example? Cutting, putting a seam into the edge of a pouch, yeah. and I want it to be the same depth all the way around. You do it with the mouse, because obviously the mouse doesn't have any pressure sensitivity. And um, my work on tablet and uh, sculpting software have this interesting bug where if you work with the mouse and then switch back to the pen, the moment you start using the pen, it, it assumes the alt key is held down. And in ZBrush, the alt key does all sorts of weird and wonderful and mostly unwarranted things. So uh, it gives me no end of joy when uh, that happens. But uh, I was training some people recently, they all have exactly the same thing happen. So at least I know it's not just me. I was that over at Ramon's? It was, yeah. It was working with his lovely wife, who was learning to make jewellery, and his lovely uh, artist, Eduardo who was uh, learning how to convert and alter mod models for printing. One of these days when I've got a bit of time, I'm going to come and... Well, I'm inviting myself around to your house for a week or so, and I just want to sculpt. Yeah, man. Sounds like a plan. We've got spare income. Yeah. Well, I like seeing the new place and the dogs. Oh, yeah. no, you're, you're a single dog, aren't you, at the moment? A single dog. We may go double dog. It is an option. Yeah, we've just gone double uh. dog. Yeah, it's been discussed. It is, it is definitely an on the cards. We'll call that a uh, a developing scenario. <laughs> right, I'm just doing his boots at the moment, just while I'm waiting for his coat to properly dry. I've just realised that I've found myself in a slightly weird and possibly embarrassing situation where I've got this, um, I've got an ampersand, you know, and symbol, but I'm trying, I want to modify in a very specific way. I know exactly how to do this in 3D and not a clue how to do it, just as an image. I might end up having to make it in 3D to then do a depth capture to get a 2D image I can work with. Nice. Which is the most arse backwards way of doing this I can think of, maybe. I don't know, I know a lot of artists who, um, they'll actually uh, create a scene in 3D and then um, set a camera and then take a grab from it and then overpaint that. Oh yeah, I can see that with it being a thing. I just feel it's embarrassing to be doing it for typography because that's, you know, yeah. pretty much the lamest thing possible. How am I going to do this? Maybe Illustrator is my solution. Yeah, it's got to be Illustrator, surely. It's got to be Illustrator, yeah. Old, so creative. I don't know. Seeing as I can't see the chat or any of your metrics, have we got people in 
watching? Uh, I don't honestly know. I know uh, Wise Old Buddha was in. Let me have a. Uh, I don't know, honestly, no. Fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, we've got a couple of people. Yeah, we've got Wise Old Buddha's watching. Um, you can put a tweet out if you want. You've got that um, big old monster thread, haven't you? I have, yeah. Um, I'll open up Twitter on my desktop because the phone's not here. I don't know if it's just me of late, but my god, the, the Twitter app on Android is so flaky. Really? Three times before it gives me an update. Right, let me copy your link. Uh, right. Do some tweets. I'm using a little trick at the moment to try and keep a bit of harmony across the browns. So I'm actually using the highlight of one of my darker browns as the um, base colour for another part of the model. And that kind of keeps it feeling all part of the same model. Yeah, that's a very, very good call. I think, well, I think in many ways working with a model like this that's got a limited palette is more challenging or it certainly it brings a different set of challenges to a miniature where you've got more free reign as to what you want to do to define the areas yeah i'm ever so slightly sad that the um there isn't an awful lot of red what with red being my um power color and all that mm. you do like a red i think everyone has that one color though don't they everyone's got the color they know they yeah. can they can rock Green it is for me. Dark green. Really? Love a dark green. Yeah, I love a dark green. I struggle with green sometimes. I get really fussy about the blends or the transitions. Yeah, I can get that. Dark greens. Love them. Um, bone white. Oh, yeah. Forever painting things bone white. Drives, drives my wife mad because I'm always complaining that it's an absolute pain in the ass to do. And then the very next thing I'll do is like, oh, we we'll look good on this model. Bone white. Let's exactly. Go. Whoa. I'm really glad people can't see my screen right now as I absolutely stuff up the basic operation of uh, Illustrator. What, opening it? Uh, well, I've got it open, but I'm, uh, I've, I've done something really weird previously to my menus, and so none of them are where they're supposed to be. I just need to lock this layer so that I don't mess around with it. I did like your idea for the logo, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see if I can actually carry it off now, which is what we're attempting to do here. Uh, big, big shout out to Illustrator's new curve draw mode, which is absolutely stunning. Oh, I haven't used Illustrator for so long. Oh, no, I, I was I was entirely unaware of this feature, but I'm able to draw, and it's in, interpolating my curves just beautifully. Actually, that little bit of Photoshop I did just to kind of do a little overlay reminded me how long it's been since I've actually opened Photoshop for anything other than to scribble over artwork from you or Doug. And... Yeah. 
That's just not quite the same, is it? It's not quite the same as actually putting some assets together and messing about. Right, possibly the least interesting part of this whole skull. So on his um, on his right hand, does he do he, these bandages go all the way over his hand? Mm, if you look at the artwork on which it was based, he's basically it's just his fingers sticking out the end. Right. Okay. It's like a mummy wrap. Like a mummy wrap. That's a very good way to describe it. Highly technical. <laughs> this is how we communicate, isn't it? Yeah. People are witnessing magic in action, right? Right, let's let that dry off. I'll get a few paints out for the, uh, the old skin. So what has he got? Like a auburny, reddish, browny hair? Yeah. Come on, where's the blonde hair? I like painting blonde hair. <laughs> this is an outrage. It's an absolute disgrace, what can I tell you? Are you on a wet palette yet, or are you still um, using a dry palette? You know me, mate. I am, I am Mr. Flippin, old school. I am, I am dry palette all the way. Uh, for no reason other than the fact that I've been lazy about learning new techniques. Right. I can't, I can't claim it for any other reason than that. I actually found with a wet palette because I've got like this little sort of spongy area off to the side. I can actually just dampen the tips of my brush before I go into the paint, and it just just gives me a really nice consistency on the paint. How about licking your brushes? Bro? Yeah, I'm desperately trying not to do that because not that I'm particularly worried about the toxicity of paints, but I just think it's a bad habit when I'm trying to paint and talk to people at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, I can hear myself all of a sudden. That's weird. Uh, oh, you need to re-mute um, Twitch when you rebooted the client. No, no, Twitch is muted. I'm hearing myself through your channel, I think. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it's still not letting me post. It obviously has a me and Twitch. We have a fundamental disagreement that we need to resolve. Apparently we've got some people tuning in off the back of the Twitch feed, so that's good to know. I'm going to assume that you can see them, because I can't. Um, yeah. A few people join us. Let me see Lovely. what's going on. Um, it's not the most interesting part of the process, but after this it starts getting a little bit more interesting. Blocking out at the moment. So, have you watched the entirety of season one? Um, close to, yeah. That's awesome. You just basically treat it like any other TV show. Yeah, I mean, try, try and watch every week, if I can. Uh, I tend to find, because obviously it goes out on a... Um, Thursday? Thursday, but... Because it's LA Coast time, for me that's like, they start at about 2.45 in the morning. 
Um, right. So I pick it up on the on the Friday. So normally when I'm working on Friday, that's what that's what's going on. You have that in the background. Yeah, it's nice. The great thing is, you can glance over and enjoy the, the physicality of the, the cast having fun together, but at the same time, really intensely working on something, just voices alone, you know, will carry you through. I mean, that's why they've made it available as a podcast as well. Yeah. I mean, so you, don't, you don't need the visuals, they're just bones. Yeah, hippity hoppity modern music. I kind of I have streamed where I listen to sort of like just stuff off of uh, my Amazon Prime kind of account, but then Twitch algorithms kind of kick in and they're like, uh, "We're going to mute a load of your channel," uh, which is not necessarily yeah. the coolest when you're um, trying to sort of explain what you're doing at times. So I'm trying, yeah. this is a live stream from YouTube, which presumably isn't triggering their algorithms, so I'm kind of piggybacking off of that. I think it's a Spotify kind of free playlist, but then I might be completely wrong and this might all get mute. Oh, I lick my brush. I should, put, oh, no. I should put 50p in the pot when I do it. <laughs> Such a bad habit. You do this at all, I'm, what? What I've found I like doing more and more recently is um, is actually painting texture in. So if I'm painting like cloth, I'll kind of almost crosshatch across the across the surface. I'm totally there with you on this. When I was painting the uh, my blacksmiths doing like anvils, clothes and stuff, I made sure I was uh, sort of building up that sense of torn leather and sort of some stippling and some scratching, and I think it all works really nicely. Yeah. Apparently I sound like Dalek, that's, that's good to know. Uh, I think this, yeah, you're a faction robot but... Not sure there's much I can do about that, to be honest, right now. Not at the moment. I don't have a button that I can press that instantly makes the internet better. That would be really helpful. Hey. Someone could just invent that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, get on that straight away. Well, I'm having a weird thing here where I've got a font that works perfectly normally in Word, uh, take it into Photoshop, and it only works in capitals. Yeah, okay, that's a fraction weird. That is, I've, that, that's a new one on me, I've not seen this before. Oh, I'll have to tone that that white trim down. Don't want it to overpower. I'm just going to mute you for a second, for no other reason than I want to eat a biscuit. <laughs> I'm now insanely jealous of your biscuit eating.
Oh, that is a massive biscuit. Or you're eating it really uh, slowly. I was eating it really slowly. No, I I had literally forgotten to turn on the uh, microphone again. I just have pictures of you going, mmm, delicious, mmm. <laughs> I'm a professional, me. I like his sheepskin cloak. Yeah, um, that was fun to do. I love doing. I love finding ways of doing that sort of thing digitally because it's one of those weird things where that's something that you could do quite easily with putty and a and a pin. And uh, figuring out how to make that happen on a computer is quite quite the challenge. Digital style, yeah. Um, so, BonesCon, uh, I mean SmogCon, I mean BonesCon, are you going? Me? Oh, I'm, I am there, yeah, I'm there, You're I'm going. all over it. I have, um, I have got a ticket, however, it turns out it's at the same time as New York Toy Fair. I'm going to guess that you're going to be in New York. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go to New York and uh, do some business. Yeah. Um, right. While you guys get to go to... Bones con and have a huge amount of fun with some dots here and gillballing. Oh, we're going to have a blast. Best thing for me about Bones con, straight up, is it's the one of the very few shows I can go to that uh, is near my house. So uh, I can I can chill out in the evenings. I can hang with all, all the cool people and then I can go home and I can see my family and then I can rinse and repeat the next day. It's going to be awesome. That's cool. Chris or H going down? No. I don't believe so. Um, it's not uh, not so much their scene. Right. But uh, Sherwin's going to be there. Yeah, I was going to room in with Sherwin, but it sounds like he's going to have a room to himself now. It's no bad That'll thing. Be nice. Let's try right. I thought I, some more pots. I was done with ink washes, I'm not. I want to knock this fur down a little bit, otherwise it's a bit overpowering. Oh, hmm. There's no easy way to say it, but the uh, font idea I had doesn't look very good, so I'm going to do something different. Yeah. Oh. hey when that happens. Yeah, I really thought I'd nailed this one, but nope. Oh, ah. Ink is not good. Don't want to be tasting the ink, man. No, do not drink ink. I, I, I just love the fact that so many people who paint lick their paint brushes that what a brand of paint tastes like is a part of the conversation quite often. Yeah. Oh. I had the perfect font that I wanted yesterday, and now I can't wait to get it. Images. What's he doing, winding up Jake? <laughs> You're a dickhead. I'm painting, I can't bring you up. Oh. Oh, that was his head. Dog on. <laughs> a to... wild dog has appeared. Yeah. It, it uses jumping all over the painting table. Yeah. It's right. super effective. Go in there. Have a little snooze. Yesterday I found a really old school font right that was just perfect and can i can i do the same search and find it now oh i hate that i 
I will not be denied. Uh, I wonder if got here will ever Reese would have arrived by then. It should do. As far as I know, the boys are all stacking up in the warehouse at the moment. Um, I'm certainly seeing all of the uh, all of like the last kind of layouts and things like that that Alex and the dev team are doing to the rule book. So hopefully it should be going out. A very worst case, I think. Um, Perko is going to plan on taking. He'll obviously have a whole bunch of stuff down with him. Um, so there's there there will be God tier at uh, at Bonescon. I uh, had a great time in Holland last week at uh, looking at all the casting stuff. Yeah. And oh my goodness, there was some <laughs> there was some God tier on display. There were just models everywhere. Yeah. It was crazy. All right. Okay. Yeah, take him along. Yeah, I, I wish I was going to... New York Toy Fair is kind of too much of a big deal. If there's anything else, I'll probably um, sack it off to kind of come and hang out at BonesCon. Toy Fair is kind of a thing, though. It kind of sets us up for the year. And what with um, Rich having his baby and all that. Yeah. That's not long now, is it? Not long at all. Right, so that's the bad ab brown done. I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, flesh on wash on the face, and then while that's drying, I can be uh, nailing down this coat. Get on to do the the cool stuff, which is actually highlighting and it's feel like painting a mini for me is a lot like painting a room in the house. You have to do all the boring rubbing down the skirting board and getting all the old wallpaper off filling in all the lumps and it seems to take forever and the really cool bit is the bit where you like you're actually putting color up and you can see the room transforming is for me it's exactly the same in minis like the base coating is all right it's kind of just getting the model set up right and then i think that that's fair as soon as the ink wash is done and it's dried, then I'm happy because um, now now I'm on the kind of home straight or the fun bit. Did you um? How did you scale these models? Are these kind of scaled to sort of like standard size models that people use for like D and D and stuff? These ones that you're painting now are probably slightly slightly taller than they need to be. But right. um, so they're all scaled relative to themselves. They're roughly in keeping with a uh, with a miniature that we would produce. Right. Um, but one of the interesting things about them, from my perspective, is that they are proportionally very different to the sort of models we normally do. I think they're much more realistic, and that has an effect on how big you make them because you want the heads to be certain sizes so that you can get in there and get some nice face detail. Yeah. Right, let's have a little zoom up and see. Uh, I'll get it in focus so we can actually have a. There you go, what do you reckon on the. Oh! Get in there. You know, win a paint prize. I did win a paint prize. Uh, the very first Smogcon. Um, I won uh, best. Um, what did I win? Russ, you were there. You won a load of stuff as well. I won loads of that, yeah. Yeah, I got best monster, didn't I? You got best monster, as I recall. That sounds about right. Um, between us, I seem to recall that there was like. There was like 12 categories and we had 11 of them between us. I, I think we were showing off. I think we cleaned up a little bit. Um, I think that um, I got like, I don't know, best in shows for dogs, right? But 
whatever whatever the miniatures equivalent of that is for um for the model I submitted. That that big troll blood. It was um. Gork? No, not name? Gorka. Um, the guy with the big gun. Bazooka guy. Yeah, Bazooka Joe. No, Gunbjorn. That's Gunbjorn, it. Gunbjorn, yeah. Oh, it's a wicked mini. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Lovely figure. Somebody was on fire that day. That was one of the great Chris Walton um, uh, character concepts. That guy, his his character concept work was just beautiful. I don't think he's he's with them anymore, though. Was he a full time or was he a contractor? I believe he was full time. Right. I could be wrong. Uh, you know, Chris Walton, if you're listening, not very likely. Um, and I, I've got that wrong. I apologise. The reason I can't find the font I'm looking for in my font list is because it's not called what I thought it was called. That doesn't help. Has it been there all along? Been there all along. I um I I never cease to be in awe of how quickly you can put colour down on a model. How do you mean? Well, at this point, if I was painting this model, I'd be like, you know, I'd have finished one boot by now. <laughs> it, it's just you know, people talk about how quickly I can sculpt, uh, but honestly, I can I can sculpt four figures in the time it takes me to paint one. Right. Uh, so, this means we should stick to what we know. I, <laughs> I kind of, I always feel like a little bit of a fraud because it's, it's basically, I don't know. I just, it's, it's something I've always done is been able to paint real quick, um, and I, I kind of swear it's just all tricks and stuff, but. They're good tricks to know, man. Yeah. I think pre-shading is the absolute secret. Why is it every time I create a new font layer in Photoshop, it's making it 4.2 points high, which is literally so small on my screen I can't see it. To duplicate the layers I've got instead. I don't understand how Photoshop works. No. Seems I know how to make it do the things I want to do, but I don't actually understand how to use it. Yeah, I'd love to be like a Photoshop power user, sort of using it every day like Tom does and kind of really oh, find yeah. the ins and outs you know. of it and everything. I'm going to confess, I'm going to admit defeat and uh, end up making this thing in 3D. Lol. <laughs> Copying it across. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah. Does that mean we get a 3D logo? It means we get a 3D logo, yeah. That's, that's always nice. In answer to the question, which of my logo ideas looks better, the answer is neither of them. Right now, they both look terrible, so clearly mm -hmm. something needs to happen. 
What do we use to print minis? We, um, uh, other than the facetious answer, which occurs to me, it's just largely because I don't know the actual technical answer. Uh, were you just going to say a printer? A, yeah, a really expensive 3D printer machine. It and is a really expensive 3D printer. We use a machine by a company called Envision Tech, and uh, they're the same machines that are used by um, probably most of the big games companies that use 3D printing from miniatures manufacture. I know that Games Workshop use them. I know that um, PP use them. I assume that um, people like Reaper do. Um, it's a machine that was actually built for the medical industry, which is why it captures such high resolution um, stuff, because it was used for doing like surgical prints and MRI prints and a lot of dental work. And uh, it can get it gets used in a lot in the jewelry industry for the same reason. Um, so it can print in all sorts of different materials, um, sort of resin based. Um, the material that we use is a uh, it's like an orangey peach color. In fact, that that peachy brown you've got mixed up on your palette there is very much the color yeah. that comes off the machine. And um, we use that material, which again that was that was a dental material because it's heat and pressure resistant. So it's perfect for putting in a in a vulcanizing rubber mold, which is how uh, miniatures are cast. You 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 put them in a silicon mold and you you mold one and then from that you mold a series of high resolution masters with a special alloy it's not a material you can use for gaming figures because it, it's brittle it shatters like glass if you drop it but it captures loads more detail than normal normal metal would um and that's what you make production molds from so traditionally uh, models are sculpted in uh like fimo or green stuff and it would just be a uh, like a sculpted at size and that would go in the mold and that material is like a hard epoxy clay so you treat this and those exactly the same way in fact i've seen production molds that are some of them are digital prints and some of them are um old old school traditional sculpts being pressed on the same master um one of the nice things is um normally the heat from the mold will destroy the traditional sculpt so you can't feel for a traditional sculptor who pours weeks of his life into sculpting a miniature and then the moment, or her life, and then the moment um, that miniature gets pressed for moulding, it's destroyed. The, the epoxy can't cope. But the 3D prints usually come back out uh, perfectly, perfectly serviceable. And of course we can always just run off another one if we need to. I feel more sorry for green sculptors when they have to kind of come into contact with someone like me where I'm like, oh, Russ, you can just move his arm around a little bit, could you? Yeah, or the, uh, you know, can we just throw uh, throw some chainmail up on that, uh, that tabard? Yeah. And uh, the traditional guy's like, I'll be back in three weeks. And I'm like, give me, give me ten minutes and I'll uh, make a cup of tea at the same time. That is one of my favourite parts of my working week is when we just hang out and live, live sculpt stuff and, you know, we... You can like literally see the model sort of appearing in front of your eyes, whereas... Well, we're definitely getting some of that up on the channel. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Am I entering anything at BonesCon this year? I don't think I can. Um, Why? In answer to the question that's just appeared on my screen. Well, my officially, my ticket is uh, being provided as a staff ticket by BonesCon in exchange for me producing their rather um, exclusive BonesCon miniature. Um, this year and so I think it might be a bit remiss of me to to ride up on a free ticket and um, enter the painting contest. Are you, I mean, are you implying know. that if you, if you entered you would win? Well I mean obviously I would because I'm amazing well, so uh, I mean I'm not going I, so you know I think it's logical. Well exactly you know, the one person who might be able to take me down. <laughs> um, yeah. No I've, I've been to BonesCon what they, they've had five or six I think I've been to four of them and after year one um, where I sort of swept it because it was year one and the competition wasn't as strong as it subsequently became, I decided uh, to retire un uh, as an undefeated champion because, frankly, having seen the the quality of entries, the competition has moved to a place where I wouldn't stand a chance anymore. I, I don't know um, about I you. I just don't have the... So much better. I haven't got the time to kind of do that. Um, I kind of feel... Sorry. I was just going to say, that, that model that I kind of picked up gold within the um uh in the best monster that i think that was a 42 hour model wow man yeah he's yeah he's got time for that well obviously you know competition painters do but if you're anything like me i paint what i consider to be nice quality gaming miniatures because i want to get stuff on the table pretty much um oh. 
Uh, well, uh, Glamage has said he won last year, but he's still going to enter this year. Well, just goes to show he's got more sticking power than I have. Um, I actually think my, my painting skills may have atrophied slightly because I spend more time sculpting miniatures than painting them these days. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. honestly, I don't regret that. I can still paint well enough to put something on the table I'm happy to game with. Um, and I love sculpting more than painting. I would genuinely prefer to sit and sculpt a miniature than paint one. Really? Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Um, you know, one of the reasons I enjoyed doing the Critical Role miniatures so much was... It was uh, it was something for myself. I almost never sculpt for myself. People assume that I I have trays and trays of unique miniatures, but honestly, there's no time. We 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 keep ourselves so busy with what we're doing, you know, in, for our for our work. Yeah. Um. But I love sculpting. I, I mean, I'm. You're too busy doing unique sculpts for Loxum. Say again, sorry. I said you're too busy doing unique sculpts for Loxum. Well, yeah, that's right, and. Uh, Reposes and competition figures. <laughs> Any time I'm not sculpting is wasted time. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Sleep is for the week. What I'm looking forward to is um, I've got the bit between my teeth for, for doing this kind of thing now. I want to do, you know, I'm sculpting my own D and D character. I want I want to do some more like classic kind of. Because what I like about these Critical Role miniatures is they're a really contemporary take on classic fantasy miniatures. And that was been really fun to work on. You know, because none of these figures look like a generic cleric in a tabard with a mace. But they don't feel like they break the world setting. Yeah, I think... Um, do you know what? I'm going to nick that because um, that's, a, love, that's a, a lovely way to describe it. It's a contemporary take on a classic fantasy mini. And... And you're right, looking at it, it's 100% accurate, what you're saying. Well, I don't feel that clever for coming up with that. I've spent a fair, fair amount of time with these miniatures in the last week thinking about that. Ah, you know. But, I, think, uh, I think it's a really good way of describing them. On, a, on an entirely unrelated note, just from a personal perspective, as we're setting up our new D&D campaign, is the guy that we've got who's playing our mage, Chris is playing our mage, he was asking, you know, should he take Fine Familiar or something else? And everyone who's watched Caleb is like, take Fine Familiar, because in the hands of a creative player, that spell is so good. Oh, yeah. Someone said that they'd like to see me sculpting at Bonescon. Well, I'll tell you what, I have no official plans to do so, but I will bring my portable... Um, it's almost like a tablet-style computer that's made by Wacom specifically for sculpting. I'll bring it down with me, and um, we'll just sort of, you know, 3D sketch and throw down and, and chat to people. Um, I don't know if I'll, uh, now you're making me I'll be doing more... anything formal, but... Now you're making me even more sad I'm not coming along. Oh, man, what can I tell you? Hey, you get we, we, get, we get plenty of time together, though, to sculpt and uh, paint and shoot the breeze. True. True enough. I'm just jealous. It's going to be a good time. That's looking good. So what are you going to do with this figure when you're done? Pack it up and send it all the way over to Liam O'Brien. Do you know what? I think um, there's an outside chance that him or someone might be at New York Toy Fair. So maybe, um, maybe I'll try and bump along and say hello and... If I see him, I'll give it to him. If not, yeah, I'll just send it over to him and see if uh, see if they open that'd the box. Ah, that'd be really, really cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, I agree. Fine Familiar is a, is a spell that adds a, a lot of life to characters. I think that um, I think you can you can do a lot in games like D and D to bring your character to life. That's not to do with your stats and and it is to do with the concept. I mean, you know, the character I'm working on at the moment, it's got. He's an elderly guy. He's a he's a librarian. His specialist uh, subject is beekeeping and making different curative teas, and so he's constantly you know getting at the teapot and brewing it, brewing something up and adding slices of lemon. And I just love it. I love I love that kind of layering of of a character being more than just his stats. I think it has to be, doesn't it? Yeah. I think that things like Critical Role, I mean, they're the obvious they're the obvious one, but I think a lot of the D and D 
like role playing on YouTube and role playing on stream has really helped sort of broaden the definition of what's possible in games and you know what people strive to do in games. I mean, I know that there are players for whom it's really important to get the rules right and get your combats down and and feel empowered, and that's that's awesome. But I've always been the guy that, for me, it's about telling a good story, and I'm I'm not massively concerned about the other side of things. Yeah, story is king. Well, the thing is, as I was trying to explain, um, sort of chatting to someone the other day, and we were like just bandying ideas around for for designing a role playing game. And um, for me, the thing with role playing isn't the time where you, I don't know, you rolled a seventeen and you actually hit and rolled eight damage with your with your mace. Kind of that just sort of blurs into the background, but it's actually the memories where you, you know, the context, you know, where were you at in the story when you actually made that role, when you finally defeated that, yeah. you know, that orc chieftain on the bridge, holding him off while everyone else was desperately trying to, you know, solve the puzzle, blah, blah, blah. It's that's, it's the rapper that makes it um, cool. Totally. 100% agree. Right, I'm going to give this a little bit of an orange glaze, and then that should be the coat done. Just so I can get it closer to um, the original artwork. I'm going to put a bit of an orange yeah, glaze on. Yeah, that's going to work beautifully just to warm that leather. Look at that. I mean, I don't know how that's looking through the magic of your actual eyeballs, but through through the camera I'm viewing on, that's a really nice blend. Yeah, it's giving it a lot of depth. I love the idea of a monk that's a homebrew ale guy. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So the um, so I didn't tell you I was um, we were playing um, or one of my groups is playing uh, Star Wars um, Age of Rebellion at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm running it, and uh, we kind of ended up playing it wrong. Like, I guess I hadn't read the rule properly, or or something. But but what the way we ended up playing it, we kind of finished a session, and we went, "That is the most Star Warsy game, Star Warsy role playing game I have ever played in my life." And then I realised <laughs> that we'd actually played it wrong. So the next week we tried to play it the right way, and we we're like, "Oh, now it just feels like D and D in space." We've gone back to the accidental house rule hack. Um, well, I think that's awesome. Yeah, because is... I I've struggled with um with that system. Right. I think it's it's way so basically the way that we did it um was we um oh hold on someone at the door uh so. You know the the hit point system. You're supposed to roll a critical when you get enough advantages on your dice roll, um, yeah. or if you're um, uh, suffering, like if you've got and kind of go to like below zero hits, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we I kind of sort of said, oh, I looked at like the scale of what the damage was doing for the different weapons and everything, and then thought, well, do you know what? I, I guess I just made an assumption that the weapon damage was so high and the health was so low that. Obviously, you didn't actually die or go unconscious when you hit zero hit points. You just kept taking criticals until you you built up enough damage to to kind of get one of the really high criticals and die, or you know get knocked out. So that's how For we sure. played it. So we're like um, the guys were kind of running along this canyon, and they were shooting their way through these advancing stormtrooper lines. And Steve, his character, got shot about fourteen times, and he's dragging himself along. He's got a broken arm, and he's like he's still hanging in there. And we finally got to the bit where they managed to blow the bridge and, um, you know, then they're scrambling to kind of get back to the base and everything. And, um, and it turns out if we'd run it right, he would have just fallen over and been unconscious after the first encounter. And so, um, who wants that? <laughs> so we're like, yeah, let's not do it like that because that kind of doesn't sound very good at all. Uh, I think I, I, I completely hear you. I think that, um, I don't know, I liked I, I, that. How, how best to put it? That was a game that's very, very keen. It's very in love with that mechanic that it's created for its dice system. But it's, for me, a little questionable as to how uh, how much that's adding to the game for the amount of work there is to use it. Yeah. It um, There's just a bit where you, it's just slightly confusing as to um, you end up with... Um, 
a resounding success but a load of disadvantages or that like or you end up with a triumph but a load of kind of you know uh, setbacks and you're like i don't there's a couple of sort of like paradoxical situations that kind of seem to happen yeah um that sort of just break it for me a little bit but what the credit where credit's due in in my kind of wednesday roleplay group um these the guys are generally more on the favor of um you know, just getting into combats and fighting stuff. And they are role-playing the living hell out of these dice rolls. So you end up with a dice roll that sort of, like, you know, enables them to give, what you know, someone else a, a blue dice to their next attack. So, like, Jules will sort of say, well, um, I'm clearly just kicking a, you know, a, a bit of crate over towards Steve's character so he can kind of dive behind it, get a bit of cover, and, and shoot more confidently. And that, that just wouldn't happen ordinarily. If we were just playing, like straight D&D or something, it would just be you know, my worst kind of game which is where you just stand there rolling dice at each other Yeah That's good though that's, that's you know if you, if you I think it is a group that will reward um, role playing reward role players Yeah, and that's brilliant I just think that for me um I like the I like the simplicity of uh, something like D and D because if I want to drive that narrative, I don't want to have to stop and pick those numbers apart. But I don't know. To each their own. It seems to be hugely popular, so and very successful. So clearly, if there's something going on there, it's just not it's just not for me. I like very light systems. I think. Yeah. Star Wars, in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's always going to be successful. We're kind of on the home straight now. Just doing the face. Oh man, you've done the eyeballs. <laughs> of course I have, man. Uh... Right, so have I ever shown you how I paint faces? No. The top top tip is is firstly with the nose is is a little dot on the bridge of the nose and mm -hmm. then a little dot on the end of the nose and create like a separation and it kind of for some reason if to my eyes it kind of gives the nose a huge amount of definition and catch the top of the uh, cheekbones by the eyes corner of the eyes and then just above the corner of the eyes. That just gives you a face. That is pretty neat. <laughs> not not gonna lie, that is pretty neat. Uh, right, so eyes. So let's. Okay, let's. Lock the eyeball. That's fine, we can tidy that up. Okay. I'll have to switch brushes. It's no good. I can't paint any I can't paint eyeballs with a size two. Not with that attitude you can't. It's a bit of an old brush as well.
not too bad. We can tidy that up. Let's just get a bit of. But the other thing I've started doing with um, with eyes is I do the socket in a brown color, and then I mm. get like a this kind of half half brown, half black mix, and then I kind of go in and do like an underline on the bottom lid. And it's nice. almost like a bit of eyeliner, but it just kind of pops the eye a little bit. So I guess brown hair, brown eyes. I think that hair is going to be like tonally not a million miles away from what you've got on the jacket but you're going to be wanting to make it a little bolder in the saturation and just come up a little brighter yeah what's interesting is i i have a very specific way of painting which is actually very similar to how i sculpt which is i always do the face first oh really Always. I don't know why. I think it's something to do with this kind of notion of wanting to find the character before I get on with it. That's oh, yeah. what I like to tell myself. I think the reality is is that I think the face is fun and I'm impatient. But I, I do love doing a face. You see, my desk is littered with models that have just got the faces painted and then I get bored with it. So I make myself... Uh, the face is your reward. The face is my reward. So it's like when I eat my meal, I kind of get rid of all the carrots and the cauliflower and all the other crap, and then I can eat my steak. <laughs> well, speaking as a vegetarian, I can't comment on that. How long have you been a veggie? Since November. Okay. How's it working out for you? Loving it. Really? Yeah. Good for you, man. I'm, I'm actually, uh, like, uh, taken aside by how easily I've been able to replace me in my diet and on I would say on balance it's made my my food more varied and more interesting and uh, I've lost some weight never feel hungry don't have any kind of highs and lows it's all good very happy cool uh, is it a full is it just like a bit of a neck beard scruffy kind of stubbly type thing yeah it's more I think it's more meant to be like you know he's not shaved for half a dozen days than he's, you know, he's not full on Barry Gibb. Yeah. Well, your progress has been more successful than mine. Uh, I've produced nothing of any worth in terms of a logo, uh, but I have, I have some pretty, pretty solid ideas on what doesn't work. As I said, we've limited things from our inquiries. Which is, you know, Progress. In and of itself, a worthwhile endeavour. Right, how's that face getting there? Looking pretty good. Right, let's get a base colour down on the hair so you think I'm gonna go with half of this brown and then half of this brown see what color that looks like and then I think I might put a bit of ready something or other in there so will you be sort of glazing and, and tinting the face once you're yeah. closer to the conclusion yeah that's uh, that is the um, the secret of my faces is the glazing I'll show you I love it. Uh, this is my favourite part of painting any miniature is the bit where we get to kind of glaze the face because it just some, mm. suddenly breathes life into it. I mean, a lot of people kind of get to this point and just sort of stop. They've, you know, kind of highlighted the face, but I think we can kind of push it a little bit. I just want to get the uh, the hairline in. A friend of mine once said, you know, faces and bases, that's, uh, that's what uh, people notice on figures. Yeah. Yeah, getting that hairline is so important. The way it frames the face is really 
part of a defining element of the character. It's also when you come to painting it, one of the getting the transition right because it's very easy just to paint a really hard line and it just comes across really unnaturally when you do that. Yeah. Because hair isn't like that. You have like loads of little micro hairs that kind of just you know soften the edge. So if you paint too yeah. hard a line, it just comes across as weird. It's then, getting that feathered quality almost, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just going to use um, a bit of an ink wash just to kind of guide me in a little bit. So I noticed that the colour you're putting down there is quite a cool brown compared to the reddish quality of his hair. I take it that's because this is the shadow and so it's going to feel cooler and you'll build up more warmth into the uh, yep. subsequent layers? Yep, I'm going to go up to an orange, I think. Wow. Will you knock that back with some, some washes at the end? or? I see what it looks like. Quite... I quite like a lot of contrast when I paint hair, to be honest mm. with you. Um, so yeah, I'm I think just... the secret to really successful hair is, you know, that hair has that um, it has anisotropic shading, which is that kind of, it catches the light in the middle of its length as well as at the tips, and being able to sort of capture that quality really can bring hair to life. Yeah. Yeah, you don't ever highlight hair like you would a normal... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Object. Mm. Yeah, you're not going to treat it like his jacket, otherwise he'll just look like he's wearing a leather helmet. So hopefully this base layer should be putting a bit of warmth into this. I've got quite a blue light on my... Um... I had noticed that, yeah. See, so he's got a bit of red coming through on the hair now. Still not happy with those eyes. A bit better. Everything's suddenly gone very loud at my end. Is it? Hmm. I've not touched anything, I promise. I can even hear who I assume it is Tom in the background. Yeah. Too plain. A bit of wow. Well. Right. Cool stuff. Let's just uh, quickly do the highlight on the uh, on the belt. Then, a bit of glazing on the face, and we can call the model done, apart from the base. Someone says, what's the logo for? Um, it's for this. I'm, I'm trying to make a channel logo. Badly, at the moment. All right, let's get a little bit of. Uh, I don't normally like to kind of ink hair either. I just find it gives it a really weird sort of vibe. But I just want to get underneath. I think it's okay to ink hair as long as you're happy to work over it. Seems to be the thing. Yeah. 
you've, you've got to be able to go back in, otherwise it's all going to get crazy. I'll just do his roots, I think. I'm going to go and check on my delicious roast lamb. Mmm, nice. Which, well, less nice for you now, I guess, but... Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not so, you know, I'm not so far gone, I can't appreciate it conceptually. <laughs> what do you want? Oh! Scrappy? I'm right in the middle of doing some hair. Okay, I found part of the reason that everything was looking terrible. And I'm embarrassed to admit it's because I have turned off all anti-aliasing on fonts. So all of my fonts look really awful. Uh -huh. I'm not even sure how I did that. Right, let's get a real close up because now I'm going to do some... Uh... Right, let's get some ink lasers going. Mm -mm -mm -mm. A nice bit of red ink. Water that down. Side of the nose, through the eyes, across the temple. That dry off. This is the bit that blows Jay's mind. Like, I've shown him so many different times me painting faces, and it's amazing how putting a little bit of ink. A little bit of red yeah. ink to the side of the nose just suddenly makes it feel like a like a real piece of you know skin. It's just like you're adding an extra dimension, isn't it? Yeah. Is he a is he a drunk or or not? Do you drink? Uh, he's a not, character? Noted, not, not a heavy drinker, I wouldn't have said. No. I, mean, I mean, he doesn't mind a drink. Alright, but I don't need to give him like a an alcoholic's nose of any sort. No, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, can you see the where the, that glaze on his face has just um kind of breathe breathed a bit of life into his cheeks. Yeah. Are you gonna? Would you at this point? Would you do that around the lip area just to pick up a bit of that that bottom lip and warm it? I will do. I just I, do? I'm just going in with a little bit of blue on the um on the beard now, and I know he's a brown haired guy, but blue is a great colour to shade stubble and and chins and and what it'll also do is cool down the bottom part of his face and like the neck shadow. And then when I've done that, I'll go in and hit the um, this bottom lip with a little bit of. Uh... It looks a bit like um, who's the um, who's the guy out of the Hangover? Bradley. Oh uh, yeah, I know the guy you mean. He's the guy Bradley Cooper does yeah. um, Rocket Raccoon's voice. Yeah. He does have a touch of the Bradley Coopers about him. And I'm gonna put a bit of a glaze over the top of this scarf just to cool that down as well. Subtly just give it a different tone. The thing is with, um, with glazes is when you first put them on, you always panic, don't you? Because it doesn't look like it's doing anything. Yeah, but you mustn't. 
give in to that and overdo it, otherwise you ruin. Don't don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Just 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 roll with it. Yeah, let it dry. You can always add another coat. Cool. I'm also going to use that blue glaze just to make his boots a little bit colder. In terms of colour temperature at the bottom. Especially in the darker shadows. There you go. Looks pretty good. Okay. Oh. Alright, on home straight. So, I might go with a bit of a green sort of base, I think. So I'm like two tone in the base subtly. That'd be nice. So if we get things all set up, are you going to do a bit of sculpting tomorrow? Am I going to paint? Because uh, it's Monday, I can be around for a stream. I don't mind painting, yeah. more, painting some more minis. Or uh... yeah, why not? I need to. Um... I need to work on my D and D character, and I might I might have some critical role stuff in the barrel that we could take a look at. Why not? Sounds good. Well, we can try and get the old technical side of things all set up. That'd be grand. Right, just while that ink's drying, let's quickly go around and do the base.
Trying to finish that. Have you got a favourite from all these sculpts? Um, I have a favourite, but it's for a very personal reason that's nothing to do with the characters or the uh, designs. It's entirely to do with personal skill. Um, I would say that for me it's Yasha, because I find sculpting kind of, you know, really strong, like physically strong women that still look feminine is quite a challenge, and I think that Yasha is one of those ones where I'm, I'm really happy with the results. I think she looks absolutely superb. You got it right, yeah. Um, it, in a, in you know for achieving that so for me it's probably that one just as a like an achievement technically I mean, um, it's something we try and we spend quite a bit of time on don't we to um try and you know make sure we're using you know sensible body image so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely i mean you know gilball's great because we've got young people old people people of different body types deep people of different ethnicities yeah, it's a very inclusive and diverse sort of uh, cast of characters that we've got. And I, I'd like to see that brought across into more fantasy ranges because, you know, elves and dwarves that are just varieties of sort of, you know, it's a Caucasian yeah. dude with a beard. Yeah. Caucasian dude with pointy ears. It just feels a bit limited. All right, let's bring the camera in. Focus a minute. Oh, look at that! How's that work for you? Oh, that ain't too shabby, is it? Don't fall off. I mean, that just, that's just, that just is him. Yeah? Happy with that? I'm I'm more than happy with that, yeah. He looks fantastic. Can't wait to see what uh you know, we'll tweet that out to the cast and see what they think. That looks lovely. Yeah. I might do a little bit of fiddling about after dinner. I might put a little bit of purple just in the shadows around the bottom of the coat just to really mm. give a nice bit of coolness across the and contrast across the top of the bottom, but I'm quite happy with mm -hmm. With the colour at the bottom there compared to the top with the coat, I just yeah, want yeah. to push it a little bit. But um, yeah, and I'll, I'll do a quick dry brush over the top of the base and a little bit of static grass in there. That should uh, that should be one down, five more to go. Yeah, we'll get there in the end. <laughs> Actually, counting the cat, you got even more to do. Oh yeah, that's true. I'm gonna have to do the cat <laughs> separate and stick him on his little plinth. You might have to paint him twice then, because he'll need to be on his own for when he's running about. Right. Ah, uh, that looks really good, mate. Top job. Uh, it's easy when the sculpts are this good. But yeah, a little bit of tidying up. I'll do that off camera, so it's a little bit less fiddly. Uh, and I'll stick a picture out after dinner. Happy days. Cool, right. I think that's probably about it. Time for, I can smell my lamb, so I'm going to go and make sure it's not burnt to a crisp. Um... Let's, uh, well, we hook up in the morning, uh, work-wise, and then we'll work out what we're going to do stream-wise for tomorrow. Happy days. Cheers for everyone who's tuned in. Good yeah. to chat. Good to speak to you. Definitely. See you soon. Catch you later, guys. Bye.